And it'd be great because that would be a prophetic church, wouldn't it? If, if we actually, you know, is it, is it, could it be that Kierkegaard was right when he said, when Jesus walked the face of the earth, it was an easy thing to become a Christian and a difficult thing. No, it was a difficult thing to become a Christian and it was an easy thing to understand. And 200 years ago, he said this. Is it possible today we have the opposite? We have a, it's an easy thing to become a Christian and a difficult thing to understand. Why has it become so difficult? Because you became a Christian and then I decided that I would teach you my Christianity. And then I made it really difficult. Is that fair? Is that fair? This is what we have in the church today. Come up, come up here. What's your name? What? Renee? Renee? That's a cool name. You don't hear that very often. That's yeah. a really neat name. Are you, are you French? Uh, yeah, right. Okay, and then uh, you come up here. Oh, wait, no, no, no. You, you, you right there. Sorry, sorry. Just. <laughs> All right. So... So Renee's Jesus, and you're, you're, you're just gotten saved, okay? And, uh, and so, so it happens, see, I, I'm like, hey, man, here's Jesus. And, uh, and, and, and you, uh, you, uh, you get introduced to him, but the minute you start getting close to Jesus, see, it starts making me feel uncomfortable, so I kind of get in the way here. I'm I'm like See what I'm saying? And you ch- keep trying to get close to Jesus and I keep trying to get in the way because I don't want you to get close to Jesus. I want you to come to Jesus on my terms. And see, and then we have the opposite of what we're seeing today all over the world and telling you it's an awesome thing to see. But now we're starting to have priests that do this. And then, and then the child of God keeps coming back to the priest. Excuse me, what should I, you know, what do you think about this, Father? Well, why don't you ask Jesus? Samuel coming to me all the time. Daddy, what do you think about, what do you think about this? Well, why don't you go to Jesus? You, you can be seated. But we, we live in a time, like I said last night, that... We got, even like with my son Samuel, you know, he goes to school. Dad, what do you think? You think the world's 65 million years old? I don't know. I don't know, Samuel. Why don't you ask Jesus? Oh, that's foolishness. Why? Is it more foolish than me giving him an absolute because I'm nervous? Samuel doesn't need me to give him absolutes. He just... He just needs me to make God real. He just needs me to make a space for God in our home. What does that mean? That means that I'm not the spirit of truth. What does that do? I'll tell you what it does. It breaks down the power. You see... We all get freaked out in our culture about pluralism. How is the church not pluralistic? I mean, even among, I go a lot of places, even among this group right here, if I wanted to, I could tick you off. And it wouldn't be that hard. It wouldn't be that hard. Because... Christian, I mean, I I couldn't believe this. I was at a prophetic conference recently, and and 
and, and, and I actually just said it. And I said it in such a beautiful way. I thought it was like untouchable. I just said, man, you know, to be a prophetic people, we have to realize that, that Barack Obama was God's man. And we said in the name of God that McCain was God's man. And we said it in the name of God. We said it in the name of God. We said in the name of God that God told us that he was his man. And if we prayed hard enough, God would give us that man. Where is that in the Bible? Where is that in the Bible? Please show me where that is in the Bible. That it's our fault what happens with government. And so we have all these kids crying and complaining and frustrated and saying, I fasted and fasted and fasted, all because they did something that God never asked them to do. The job of a Christian isn't isn't to figure out who the Antichrist is. The job of the Christian is to not be the Antichrist. The job of a Christian is not to is is not to figure out what's wrong with Barack Obama or George W. Bush in America. This is only the context of America. Sorry for all those of you that don't even care about this. Because you live somewhere else and you're not bound by our demonic oppression that's holding us back from actually seeing Jesus. You should be able to see Jesus in anyone. And if you say, oh, I can't see Jesus in anyone. Really? Then why did you... Oh, it all feels fuzzy and all wuzzy and good and gooey when the guy gets killed and forgives his murderer. That was Antichrist. We do believe that Jesus won, don't we? We do believe he is the way, right? We don't believe that he was, we don't believe like atheists that he was just up on a cross and he was the fool. We don't believe that he was the weak one, do we? We don't believe that he was weak. We don't believe that, that he was just weak and that's why he died on the cross. We do believe that that was the victory. We do believe that he showed us the actual way. We do believe when he... You know, Jesus could have gotten a pressure group. They were called the Pharisees. They were a political pressure group. And they would have loved him. They would have fought for him. They would have killed people for him. Do we understand? I mean, seriously, do we have a history? We should. We should understand that. That's what the Pharisees were. We should understand that they were a political, religious pressure group. And we should understand, even in simple terms, and be very careful and wary when we see people in our times say that our job as Christians is to become part of political pressure groups. Because I'll tell you that that's antichrist. Jesus would have never done it. We have decided that we want to ride the back of Babylon. The church has decided that she wants to ride the back of Babylon. It's not my job to wonder who the whore of Babylon is. Although I can assure you it's not the Catholic church. It's my job to make sure I'm not riding the back of Babylon. There's a power in poverty. There's a power in ultimate trusting in the Father for everything that breaks principalities and brings the authorities down to their knees. And at the same time in our world, there is a brewing frustration. I think there's a brewing frustration 